everybody out there in Bourbon Real Talk land. Randy Sullivan with a very special guest. I have Dave from Industrial. Yes. And Dave is a cigar expert. And since I know that cigars and whiskey are kind of a thing, and I don't, much. I don't know shit about cigars. Well, so and, and I don't drink, so we got this thing all figured we're, out. We're gonna, the two of us combined. This is gonna, you tell me, I'll live through you, you live through we're me, gonna, we're gonna be great. We're gonna form a super group. So to keep <laughs> with the, the same show format, I have a special uh, single barrel selection uh, for us to try out today. Of course, it's a Russell's Reserve. It's got this uh, sweet tater sticker on it. It says, it's here. And the name of the pick is, uh, it was picked by the Straight Poor Society, uh, which I believe is out of Atlanta. A uh, very generous uh, gentleman came into town and uh, brought that for uh, a handful of us. And so on the nose, it's got a, uh, you know, there's something I've been picking up on these Russell Reserves and it's kind of escaping me. I want to say that it's like a leathery chocolate component mixed in with a little bit of citrus. I am getting a lot of smoke, but we are in a cigar shop. Yeah, so. <laughs> this is a pretty clean room. It's a clean room, yeah. but I, uh, because I don't normally smoke, I, it, it is, uh, it's getting in there. So I'm getting some smokiness, and I don't know if it's from the barrel or if it's from the actual whiskey, so let me taste it. I actually did a live review one time at uh, Fire Fireside. I'm like, all I can smell is don't smell that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, I'm. It's on the front end. I'm actually getting like a. It's like a fruit flavor, but it's like a cotton candy almost. Interesting. Um, very sweet on the front end. Tons of vanilla, caramel. Caramelized sugar flavors, um, definitely some fruit there in the center. And sometimes on these Russells, I'll get a citrus that's a little bit more acidic, like a like a green apple, not like lemon, but like a green apple. And then on the finish, I'm getting that cocoa, um, a little bit of leather, that sweet tobacco smoke. So, hey guys, let's yeah, see. the I, Straight Poor Society, you killed it. I'll tell you what, it, it's interesting. Some of the notes that you explain are a lot of the same notes that are in cigars. And I think that's why we see bourbons, whiskey, scotches. We see all of the, uh, we have now a sipping tequila society here at Industrial Cigars. Uh, a lot of those same notes and characteristics are what you pick up in cigars. Sure. So that's, the, the, obviously the pairing of those two is critical, but very interesting to hear that. All right, so are we gonna smoke a cigar again? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. All right. So absolutely. First so, off, I don't even know how to, how to cut a cigar or anything. Perfect. So uh, what we're gonna do, I know some of my listeners out there are extremely experienced cigar smokers, and he's gonna bust out with the details later. You're gonna, you're gonna get all the goods. But he's also gonna do it in such a format that if you are a novice like I am, that you're, you're getting the little tidbits of basic information along sure. the way. Okay? Sure, I, the last thing that I wanna do is impress you with my knowledge, because I don't know it all. <laughs> but I am a, uh, like you are with, with um, whiskey, bourbon, uh, do you do scotch? Uh, personally, I don't. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I probably have seven or eight bottles of scotch at the house for various reasons, but um, not usually my okay. core of choice, yeah. Okay, well, the, uh, it is, it's peanut butter and jelly here. I mean, okay. they're buying cigars and they're bringing their bottles because we are a BYOB facility. Mm -hmm. uh, Frisco doesn't allow us to sell alcohol in an environment where they're smoking, so we, uh, people are allowed to bring their, their own liquor in. And we have a number of guys that are way up here in the product knowledge and the, and the knowledge of, of whiskey and, and beginners as well. Sure. So for me, I'm, I'm very much a beginner, but I love the fact that somebody wants to drill down into what the notes that come out of that are. Because with a lot of people, they see a cigar and a cigar looks like a cigar. Right. That pour looks like a pour of anything else. It right. could be a seven dollar or a, or a three hundred dollar pour. They all look the same. It's it's being around people that understand why it's different. Sure. And that's really what we focus on. We're not here to talk about the strains of particular tobaccos and things like that. Although we can talk about it. In the end, what we're trying to do is put the give you the right cigar, 
so that it will match what, what your flavor profiles are. And a lot of times we ask the question starting out, um, when people come in and they're new, they automatically think I should get a cigar that's got s sweet uh, characteristics, literally sprayed with a sweet fluid. Mm -hmm. And those are called acid, and there's some others that are out there that are actually sweet. Mm -hmm. And they think because they're getting started, they should start sweet. Mm -hmm. But, in, and I don't know if it's, that, if it's the same way with whiskey, but in the case of um, cigars, it ignites the same part of your palate as coffee. So if we have a beginner coming in, we'll ask, what kind of coffee do you drink? Right. If somebody just hammers it with milk and cream and sugar and all the other stuff, they're, they're, they haven't really adapted that flavor, that, sure. that intense uh, flavor that you'll pick up with, with coffee or cocoa. So, uh, but if somebody takes coffee black, if they're just getting started, we'll still get them a stronger cigar mm -hmm. because their palate is already for it. Right. It's, it's no different than if somebody's going to have a, a lower proof whiskey and they're maybe they're really geared to handle something a little bit stronger because of other things that they drink. Right. And you want to be able to impact their palate so they're not let down. Sure. When I drink, I drink black coffee. So if I have a weak cup of coffee, I get let down. Mm -hmm. I get frustrated. So I'll get something that's a little bit denser. But from, a, from the cigar perspective, there are some key ways to cut it. One of the things that we're going to do now, this particular sort of cigar actually starts out a little fatter and then comes to a narrower end. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will see cigars that are this long and this big around. And they'll see them like that, and they're about seven bucks, so they think it's a good deal. Well, Golden Corral is a lot of food right. for not a lot of money. Right. Um, it doesn't mean it's good food. Right. It just means it's a lot of food. So in this case, like, with, like you would experience with bourbon and whiskey, the smaller around the ring gauge, which is the diameter of the cigar, the more of the wrapper you get. The wrapper is 40 to 50% of the flavor. So two leaves on this entire cigar is the flavor. Wow. So the bigger the cigar and the more of the filler that's on the inside of this would be like adding water and ice to that. So you really want a smaller ring gauge mm. so that you get the most out of the cigar because the flavor is in that wrapper. So and it's and I usually will describe it that a cigar that has a smaller ring gauge diameter would be like whiskey neat. Mm -hmm. If you get it slightly larger, it'd be like whiskey with one rock in it. And then if you make a, re a really big one, it's like water, water, down. water it down. Right. Um, or and then worse. the stuff that's got the spray on it that makes it sweet is probably the that's like dumping a, a coke in it <laughs> of a flavored whiskey or like a, a whiskey coke. Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. So with this, the main thing is, is we just don't want to cut too far down. People get in a cutter and they just don't know where to cut it. Mm -hmm. What you really want to do is just cut the very top of the cap off mm -hmm. and just keep it just nice and simple. Uh -huh. um, you'll feel that you can feel the construction of that cigar is very firm. Yeah, it's, it's tight. That, so that is really all in the way as much as, again, I keep referencing back to whiskeys, but you know, there's, there's so much that goes on the way that, that the product sits and ages. And in this case, this tobacco is six and eight years old on the filler. There's a binder that holds all the filler together that's on the inside. Typically, that is not very pretty tobacco. Mm -hmm. And it's passive. It has no flavor. But it has a slow combustion rate, so that will control how slow the cigar burns. And then they put the wrapper over the top of it. In the case of this cigar, we actually used a wrapper, and we used a wrapper material as the binder so that we could mix the two. That's kind of our peanut butter and jelly. We're mixing the two together so it creates a very unique flavor. So this is a custom cigar for your shop? This is a custom cigar. It's called, it's called The House, and it is, um, it's the first of six and, uh, uh, that we'll do. Each one of my family members, we're a family-owned business, me, my three sons, my wife, my daughter-in-law, each one will have their own cigar. So this is my cigar, and it is it fits my palate. Right. So when the other when my other boys do it, they have a, a more bold profile, more bold palate. They're going to take something that's that's going to be stronger, maybe larger, but uh, this one just kind of pushes all the right buttons for me. Yeah, and uh, I don't think we mentioned this, but we are at Industrial Cigar Co. You can see that industrial cigar co in frisco texas frisco texas it main in the tollway nice and easy to get to yep um and so 
I had no idea that there was a, a binder and all that stuff in here. I went right. to, um, there's a cigar place in Jamaica, Gray something? Gray Cliff. Gray Cliff. Uh -huh. And they had a room uh, full of people that were not from J Jamaica. Right. <laughs> rolling, Probably the Dominican or Honduras. Right. That were rolling cigars. Right. And, and they had all of these leaves that were laid out. It was it was like watching someone paint. It, it, was, it, it, it is. It's an art form. And that's why one of the rules on we have we actually have these on our table which is cigar etiquette but on the cigar etiquette the one of the main issues is don't stop out your cigar you know you see people put out a cigarette uh -huh. but we just say let it die to pay homage to the artist that put it together sure so you just let it go to sleep that's what, exactly what it will do so with this um age is your friend just like what we're What's what you're friend? drinking age is your friend a lot of t tobacco ferments Tobacco is once it's once it's harvested, it is then dried. Once it's dried, it's stacked. When it's stacked together, it creates a very sophisticated compost pile. And the natural chemical reaction of that tobacco takes place. Tobacco will get to about 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Mm -hmm. Then they have to rotate it. But at about 12 months of this stack, this fermenting tobacco takes on the it takes on straight ammonia when you smell it. Mm -hmm. And then from 12 months to about 16 months, that starts to fade. That's kind of what they call the sick phase. Mm -hmm. But once it gets out of that sick phase is when they should put it into production, start making cigars. Some companies will allow the tobacco to sit longer. When it sits longer, it just gets better. Okay. So it's smoother. With this cigar, you'll get what we would call floral notes. Mm -hmm. You'll get um, uh, milk chocolate, not dark chocolate. Okay. You'll get very nominal pepper, um, and I don't know if I'm saying some things that go along with in, in sure. when you're looking at whiskey, but red, black, or white pepper, but this one really doesn't have a lot. Creamy, leathery, uh, buttery, um, all the real soft sides of the note of, of the kind of the flavor spectrum. Mm -hmm. So we like that in this case, if somebody wants something that's not aggressive, uh, we say this is a perfect cigar. This would be like you smoke this with a cup of coffee in the morning, this is really the cream for that coffee. Okay. It smooths, it would knock down any bitterness that you pick up from the coffee. So if you get any sharp edges, like if you take a, we'll light your cigar and take a sip, concentrate on that, and then follow it up with the cigar, and then follow it with another sip, and notice if it softens any of the pepper or any of the harshness, it should try to soften that. Uh -huh. If it accentuates it, then unless you want that, then we would start looking for another cigar to pair you with. Gotcha, gotcha. So we don't want anything to turn, if it, if it turns up what is negative to you, right. then let's find something else. Right. Now it may turn up something that other people like. Some people may go, I, I want to just get punched. Right, right. And this may kick it up and they'll go, shit, this perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. So um, let's light the cigar. Okay. So we have a cut. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to toast the foot. So you'll notice I'm not putting the flame right on it. Right, right. I'm, I'm just toasting the foot. And the reason we're doing that is we're getting the cigar ready for the flame, and we want the cigar to burn evenly. I'm sure a lot of your viewers have smoked a cigar that will start to run faster on one side than it does on the other. Uh -huh. And although you can touch that up by hitting the sides, yeah. when you toast the foot first, you're set. But you'll notice how far away my fire is. Yeah, yeah. I'm certain I'm going to fuck this up. <laughs> but no. I'm going to try it. So I'll toast your foot. Okay. We don't, the one thing with, with tobacco, the tobaccos have oil in them. If it gets super hot, it will actually turn into charcoal. Okay. So that's why what you want to do is when you're smoking a cigar, you want to take a hit off of it every minute. Just a, a you know, it doesn't have to be 100% full just maybe a 50, 60% full. It's like no different than your experience if you took that and shot it right. versus a sip. Harsh, yeah. And what, what we try to do is keep the temperature of the smoke down. If you start huffing and puffing, huffing and puffing, it heats all the oil up in that tobacco and it will get bitter. Gotcha. So you're better off just, nice and you know, it's just nice and slow. So we got that started. Okay. So I'm gonna have you go ahead and I'm gonna have you finish it. You're gonna take a puff while I'm doing this just to get it down the, the deal. 
down the cigar, perfect. Now all you really wanna do is you're holding it. So when you're first starting with a cigar, imagine just pulling in a mouthful of water through a straw and just holding it in your mouth and then spitting it out. Mm -hmm. You're not inhaling a cigar. We're, all we're going for is that flavor. Now, there are chemical reactions that happen that will actually trigger endorphins that cause you to relax when you smoke a cigar. It's noted that it lowers your blood pressure. Um, there's, there's a lot of uh, health benefits. In fact, my life insurance policy went down when I told them that I um, smoked a minimum two cigars a day. The reason for that is the FDA did a study on cigar smoking over a 10 year period. They said if you smoke two cigars a day, the chances of getting cancer is nil. And that's the FDA who hates everything that lights on fire. Right. So when an insurance company is going, okay, if it makes this guy relax and it takes his stress down, Lord and the Lord. chance of getting cancer is nil, my, my life insurance went down. So that was probably the most shocking factoid that I got when I met you. I had done my own research and this was years ago, because I did try to get into cigars. Oh. I have a very low nicotine tolerance because I never smoked anything. I never sure. dipped tobacco. Yeah, so I didn't I had either. no exposure to it. But I did my own research and I came to the conclusion that the cancer risk of cigars was not the same as cigarettes. No. Because it was the binders and chemicals and things that they were using in That's the exactly cigarettes. Right. Um, but when I read, it was still kind of seemed inconclusive. And it sounds like that the science has come along. It, um, it has. The thing is, is, is the tobacco leaf that you're smoking right here is the most organic thing that you'll have in your mouth today. Whether it's organic lettuce, organic vegetables, whatever, this is pure organic. It's aged, it's rolled, it's aged again some more, and then it's sent here and we smoke it. There is no chemicals, nothing. So, and you're in third world countries, they don't have advanced uh, chemical. If they lose a, a crop to bugs or something, it's just what happens. It's gone. It just, it's just what happens. Mm. But, so what I do is, and I'm gonna live vicariously through you at this point, but just take a little bit of a sip. Now you've had, had already had a little hit of your cigar, but I would just take a sip, concentrate what your contact points are with that, Now just about a 50% pull, 40% pull. Just release that. Now follow it up with this and see if you notice how the palette was reset from your cigar. Yeah, I'm getting more of a red fruit component it's so i'm getting more that's like really that's really interesting because when really well aged tobacco mm -hmm. when it hits a point of about four years it starts taking on a dried fruit dried red fruit flavor characteristic mm -hmm. so extremely high quality tobacco that has age on it this is six to eight years old the age on that tobacco will almost smell like raisins, dates, mm -hmm. dried cherry, mm -hmm. almost in a hydrated state. Right. What you're experiencing is the hydration of that fruit. Right, right. So it's interesting you say that. I didn't want to pre-plant right. that into your head, but you're, it, it also shows how sophisticated your palate is because you picked that, you picked that conversion of that of that red fruit yeah which is really really impressive yeah i was getting mostly like an acidic uh orange and and you know green apple but i'm tasting more of the red fruit now with a cigar and it, it takes a little while but we we taste by smell right and you know you can walk into a kitchen you don't have to know you don't have to see somebody at the stove to know they're cooking Right. We usually know what they're cooking. So in the case of a cigar, the way that when you, when you, when I'm evaluating a cigar, I want to get the coolest smoke that I can and I want to release it, but I also want to release it through my nose. Okay. 
So the way that I do that is I hold the cigar upright like this. Now the reason I do that is the smoke goes up, it hits the roof of your palate, comes back around and it's about 50% cooler. The experience of the cigar will be totally different when you do this. So what I'll do, and I want you to watch through my nose. At the very end, I let the last 5% out, okay? When you breathe back in, I pick up cedary, I pick up more of the subtle notes because it's come out my nose. And now when I breathe in through my nose, I'll pick up some of those elements, some of that, that oakiness and that bourbon barrel kind of a, an effect that you get. Right. And that's, a lot of people don't do that. They just, they're tasting the cigar. Right. But to get a lot of those notes, you and I know it's the first little. thing you did is you went to your nose. Yeah. And you're, and you're kind of pre-tasting that cigar. Mm -hmm. um, and that's one way to find out where a cigar is going to go is when you cut it before you light it, just take draws on it. And you'll get that sweetness from the tobacco in advance. Gotcha. That's so interesting. So <clears throat> I read this study years ago because you're talking about aging tobacco. And the study was some individual that had invested large quantities of money into cigars and he aged them mm -hmm. himself. They were, they were fully made cigars, not aging tobacco leaves that sure. were caught. <clears throat> and then he had this huge event where he brought in all these industry experts and they ranked the cigars blind and the unaged cigars won in the blind. And this guy had invested ungodly amounts of money in buying all these cigars and aging them for long periods of time. So is that the conventional wisdom that there's value in aging before you make the cigar and limited value in aging after the cigar? Well, there's two things that happens. One, you're, you know, you are, when you age the tobacco independent, it may be a particular leaf or a particular portion of the plant because the top of the plant and the bottom of the plant taste different. One, one interesting side note is at the very top of the plant, there's a flower, it's called a Corona. The Corona is also a size of a cigar, but that's called the Corona. And it's like a sunflower seed. It's full of seeds, tobacco seeds, millions of them. It looks like black pepper. Oftentimes you'll see a cigar that references like a 98 Corojo or it'll have a, a different year in front of it. People think, well, that must be because that's, that tobacco is from 1998. It's not. That seed that year was perfect. So every year they grow that tobacco using that seed. Okay. So they plant the seed, it grows up, they take that 98 out, they plant it the next year, they take the seed out, they plant it. Molecularly, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years down the road, it's, it's identical. So when they find that crop, that seed that is perfect, they'll keep it. Mm -hmm. We actually have a cigar there that the seed is carried over from 1961, and they're still growing it today. So um, to me, it kind of, this is what a cigar would have tasted like in 61. Yeah. You know, it's kind of cool that way. Yeah. But um, no, but to go back to your, to your deal, if you take tobacco and you just stack it, it's, it's, it's aging with its own stuff. Right. So it's, it's kind of like if you, if you stack a whole bunch of fillets, you stack them. But then if you took half of those fillets at one point and set them on top of strawberries with apples on the top and strawberries on the bottom, when those are together, those flavors will come together. So when you have tobacco that's all in of itself and it's aged, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. But what makes it better is when you put it all together mm -hmm. and you let that cigar age in the cigar so that, because this is, we say it's a living thing because we keep the humidity at 70% so that that cigar is breathing. It's pulling in inside the, the humidity and it's constantly bringing those oils together from the other tobacco that's inside because mm -hmm. all the leaves are different. Right. It's, it's like putting together a meal. So what you saw when you were at Great Cliff they were using wrapper and binder and filler, and some of the filler may have had flavor, and some of the flavor, of the tobacco may have had the pepper that they wanted, and some may have had the buttery notes that they wanted, and they combine all that together to create the cigar. Mm -hmm. So there's all different types of flavors, and it's a master blender that puts it all together. Gotcha. So 
in this case, we use um, a master blender named Hendrik Kellner Jr. His father's the master blender for Davidoff, which is one of the most well-respected brands in the world. I personally think his son blends better than his dad does. <laughs> his dad's getting a little older, but um, he did our cigar and his palate is more current. Mm -hmm. His dad's was old school Cuba, gotcha. you know, from the sixties. That it was just the old school has a different flavor profile. U.S. likes stronger. Yeah. I don't know if it's like that with, with whiskeys around the world. No, I mean, in the whiskey world, um, people go through a progression, right? So most people start off drinking 80 proof whiskeys when they're in college and it's a little cheaper and often mixed with something to sweeten it and then they'll go on the rocks and then need and then someone will let them try something and then, you know, they're off to the races, then they're right? Then they're hooked. And most of the whiskey nerd community really loves what we call cash drink whiskeys that have not been proofed down after aging. And it's, it sounds like it's something similar for uh, cigars. I just, I, is there a law of diminishing returns in aging your cigar after it's been assembled? There. Because that study made it seem like, I mean, when you read this thing, it was heartbreaking. I mean, this guy, I want to say it invested millions of dollars in mm -hmm. these cigars because he was going to be, He's going to corner the market on aged cigars. No right. one was, was aging cigars for this long. And everybody walked out of there and went, man, he spent all that money and made the cigars worse, right? Is there, because with whiskey, we value dusty bourbons, what we call dusty bourbons, which means they've been in the bottle for a long time. Sure. But there's something happened in the whiskey world where there was a time frame where worldwide demand for American whiskey had gone down. And so... They were making phenomenal whiskey, but they were over aging it in some instances because there was no reason to bottle it. There's no one to buy sure, it. Sure. And so you might be buying something that sits at seven years, but it might be a lot older than that. And some people believe that some of the techniques were different back then. One of the more popular ones used to use actual wooden fermentation tanks, and now they use stainless steel. So, you know, people put a lot of value, but there is a point at which a whiskey deteriorates in the bottle and what you taste is something quite different mm -hmm. than what now some people prefer that right some people are gravitate towards those flavors does the same thing happen to cigars it, it does when the cigar is rolled the kind of the the flavor impact from year one to year two is a huge step two to three three to four is a big step when you get up to about six years it really starts to level uh -huh. out there's not really a point where it falls off because I have some new cigars. Or I have some cigars that I just bought that were that are 11 years old post roll, uh -huh. and it's and they're great. It's stupid. The cotton candy you talk about, it yeah. tastes like it. It tastes like you're smoking cotton candy. Mm. It's super super sweet. Um, we have our best selling line of cigars called Atabay and Byron, 14 years post roll. They put a, they put them in a room for four years, and I was telling you how that this is a breathing. It breathes humidity. Like a barrel. They, they put it in a room that's, a, that's cedar from five parts of the world, scrape the walls to bring that, um, that aroma out, drop the humidity to 40%. So that cigar dries up and it just wants humidity. That pulls it at, back up to 70% over a three month period of just sucking in all that cedar. Mm -hmm. They do that for four years. Wow. Then wrap it and they'll sit in the wrapper for four years. Mm -hmm. Now, that is that's a that's a thirty five dollars a month. Right. It if if it had another name on it like Davidoff, it'd be a hundred to two hundred and fifty dollars a month wow. because of the cost of their distribution. But this product is really, really special. I tell people that are getting started, smoke good so you know what good tastes like. Right. And you probably could do that with whiskey as well. If you're just getting started, don't don't buy every seven, eight, nine, ten, that twelve dollar bottle. Buy something good so you know what good tastes like. Right. Even if it's not good to you, you may have to, your palate may have to mature to that point. But in cigars, smoke a great cigar because there's a lot of not really great cigars out sure. there. Sure. And I got to assume it's the same way in this. It is. Um, so I knew I'd fuck it up. My cigar is. Uh, That's easy. You want to take a hit on it yeah. about once every minute. Go ahead and I'll light you up. Now, normally, because you don't have a lot of ash on that, but normally on a relight, what we would do is knock the ash all the way off, but that happens all the time. You'll notice that your burn is just nice and even around the ends. The draw, for us, it's about performance. It's just got the cedar and the chocolate. 
Yeah, and it's and it's a milk chocolate because you'll yeah. know espresso, dark chocolate, espresso coffee, be, uh, dark chocolate coffee beans, things like that will really hit you hard. Yeah, I get a little bit of um, tea leaf, which I guess would Ooh. make sense, you know, since it it is another leaf, right? <laughs> So, but see, you're you're naturally wired to actually enjoy cigars as well, because you you're tasting the cigar for what it is. Now, if I have guys coming in going, look, we're just going to sit around, shoot the shit all night, and drink a bunch of bourbon and or whiskey, and and just have a good time, I won't put them into a really good cigar. Right. I'll, I'll get them a good cigar for eight nine dollars and just let them, because they're, they're doing this. They're not they're not doing what they're we're doing right now. If somebody's going to concentrate, then then get a better cigar where you're really going to take that time. Yeah, so one of the things that happens in the whiskey world is there are regional variations. Yes. Right? Obviously, for bourbon, the most popular region is Kentucky. Right. Okay. And why is that? Um, it's just history. So um, yeah, The wood's not better or... Well, weather if or... you go to Kentucky, they'll say that it's because of their limestone water. Okay. Right? Um, there's also a theory that that's why their racehorses are so strong, um, because the, the water supposedly affects the strength of the horse's bones and, okay. you know, things like that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, historically, that was an area where a lot of uh, whiskey was made, and a lot of whiskey was shipped down the Mississippi River to New Orleans. Um, and you know it just kind of grew from there, but prohibition killed off all of the other regions that made whiskey. And now that whiskey's popular again, those regions are starting to come back online, but their flavors are quite different. And there is, like you said, drink drink good, and your palate may not be prepared for it right. yet. Um, there are a lot of whiskey drinkers who have mature palates that are used to tasting those flavors that are regional. And now there's respectable companies that are making quality whiskey, but it tastes so different that it gets a lot of bad press. Has the same thing happened in the cigar world? Well, um, in a lot of cases, there, there are specific regions of the world uh, that, that grow tobacco. And interestingly enough, um, there's a, uh, there's a great show that's called Hand Rolled that uh, one of the manufacturers, Pete Johnson with Catuaje Cigars, uh, was very involved in the development. But it kind of told the history of cigars and the, the hand rolling of cigars. And, and it was actually wars that the United States had with some of these, these tobacco growing companies or countries that caused other countries to become popular. Okay. So at first it was Cuba, Cuba Missile Crisis. All hell breaks loose. We put an embargo on, on cigars. Interestingly enough, the day before Kennedy signed the embargo, he sent his secretary of, of his chief secretary of state down to Cuba to buy 1,500 H. Upman cigars and get them back to him before he signed the embargo, making his own cigars illegal. So, um, but that then caused people to leave and go to Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. So while in Nicaragua and also the Dominican Republic, but in Nicaragua, all hell breaks loose with the Sandinistas and there's a war and that shoved everybody across the border into Honduras. So um, you have, you had war that actually expanded the tobacco growing base. There are still a lot of tobaccos grown in the United States. Really? Um, the tobacco in the United States is primarily used for wrapper. The, you'll hear of a cigar that is like uh, we have some cigars that are called uh, Connecticut Shade or Connecticut Wrapper. Okay. It's grown in Connecticut. Okay. There's Pennsylvania Broadleaf. Um, that is also used primarily for wrapper. Uh, Connecticut is very mild. So if you see a, a Connecticut say, Shade cigar, it's very light. Um, in fact, I'll show you a couple. This would be Connecticut. Okay. This is what a Pennsylvania broadleaf would look like. Oh Pennsylvania God. broadleaf holds considerably more oil. This is a more mild cigar. Um, scale of one to ten is about a four. This would be about a six. What is so, this one that I'm smoking? This is about a four and a half. Okay. 
yeah. So is uh, darkness always the a good no, indicator? No, no. Uh, some people would see that and go, "Oh, it's my first cigar. There's no way I'm going to smoke this. It's going to be too strong." It's that's where age becomes your friend. On darker wrappers, if it's real shiny, it's going to be oily. This one's got a lot of shine on that particular cigar. So there's a lot of oil in that particular wrapper and that will sit on your palate and have almost kind of a chemical mm -hmm. flavor. And there are people that love that. I personally don't. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but dark does not mean strong. And that, okay. that's one of the things that we try to push with our uh, blind man's draw is don't be afraid of any of these cigars. Right. All of these cigars technically, as much as they look different, are all in the same lane from a from about a four to a six. Gotcha. So we, there's eights and nines, they'll set you down. Real high nicotine content. Mm -hmm. Nicotine acts as, particularly when you're smoking a cigar because it soaks into your, it slopes into your bloodstream via your tongue. Uh, nicotine acts as caffeine. So some people that smoke a cigar the first time, if this, for those of you that are out there that said you smoked one and you felt like you turned green, what you did is you smoked a cigar that has such a high level of uh, nicotine that you got a caffeine rush mm -hmm. and it's, it knocks your equilibrium off. It's like getting off a roller coaster and your stomach kind of still feels like it's up a little bit. That kind of that buzz is what knocks you kind of, makes you feel like you're a little lightheaded, makes you feel like you just got off a roller coaster. Yeah. It was this definitely. dash of nicotine. Yeah, but this one doesn't have that much in it. high nicotine count. I, I'm, uh, I died again. Sure. Is that you get to light your own cigar. All right. Uh, so what we'll do, let me just show you this. Okay. We'll just take this and knock that edge off. Is that considered disrespectful to knock, knock that's, it off? Like you that? know, it's a, it's a good, no, it's not. To light your cigar, that's the best thing to do. But um, the typical rule of thumb, we'll go ahead and take a pull. There you go, perfect. Now when you're taking a pull on a little bit harder pull, will will light more of the tobacco deeper into the cigar. That's why you're, you're puffing light on it. Uh -huh. So it's not burning down into the cigar. So when you feel a cigar, you can feel, I can feel the heat down to here. Okay, so I need to pull harder? If you pull a little bit harder, let me sh just show you this. See, it's, I can almost touch that edge, uh -huh. but now, Feel this, where you know if you go, yeah, there's heat. So it's it's further down, and that's why it's going out on you because you're just not getting it deep enough. So usually just a couple pulls like this. Get it going good. Now you notice the ash just fell off. Yeah. We say let the ash fall off when it's supposed to. Okay. Cigarette smokers, we can always tell them because they're always knocking off the ash. <laughs> Right. But the ash is actually keeping the ember cool, which kind of sounds weird. We're keeping the flame cool. But what you want to do is you want to keep that ember as cool as you can. And when the ash is knocked off, it's exposed to oxygen and it will put it out. And then that's why you're always trying to keep up with it by keeping it lit. So there are some cigars that have amazing construction that I've seen ashes go all the way down to the label. Yeah. And it just, everything is just so well constructed. This one, because we don't use, we're using two wrappers, a wrapper for the binder and a wrapper for the wrapper itself. It doesn't have that kind of dense, ugly, uh, passive tasting uh, uh, binder on it that would hold that ash longer. So this, when the ash falls off, it's actually in the 16, 1700s, they used um, tobacco ash as a cleaning element. So they used to put it in their rugs. They would rub tobacco, um, ashes into rugs and beat it out mm -hmm. they would uh brush their teeth with it okay so it's it's actually very natural it's okay to do you can taste the ash there's actually a steakhouse that's a two-star michelin chef in switzerland that puts tobacco ash cigar ash on his on steaks steak. before he serves it so if you want to you can actually still taste the elements of the cigar in the ash I'm so some pine now Definitely a woody component, but tasting a little bit of pine. Are we smoking cedar? Cigar? Yep, yeah, cedar. cedar for sure too. Yeah, cedar. But something that was a little 
I want to say greener. Green. Yeah, a yeah. greener. Yep. Yeah. Now, the wrapper that's on here, it's interesting you're picking that up. The wrapper is from Nicaragua. The binder is a hybrid. Mm -hmm. And we've heard of hybrid seeds, or we've heard of them creating hybrid fruits. This uses a hybrid. It uses a Brazilian seed. Brazilian tobacco is very dark and very oily, but tastes sweet. Okay. The Cuban is very soft and muted. So they created a Cubra seed, and it creates, they created its own strain of tobacco that's almost like adding cream to espresso. It knocks the harshness out of the Brazilian, but it leaves the sweet. And it, and it is that kind of greener fruit that you would get, and that's, that's what we use as the binder in this cigar. So that's normally a wrapper, mm -hmm. very high quality wrapper, but that's what we used as the binder because the two together give you the sweetness, but then a little bit of pepper that you would get with a Nicaragua. Yeah. So the, we were talking about regions. Dominican Republic is a huge grower of cigars. Arturo Fuente is probably the most popular cigar. Davidoff comes out of the Dominican Republic. Uh, Nicaragua has become kind of the epicenter for tobacco, primarily because Cuba, which has its own very unique flavor in their tobacco. The reason for it is on that island that there is a pH level that's not really found anywhere else in the world in the soil. Okay. So you could take the same seed and grow it in five different regions of the world and it will taste different. Okay. So a Cuban seed, um, a Cuban tobacco grown on the island is very muted, very soft. Um, Cuba was, was basically subsidized by Russia. Mm -hmm. And then Russia pulled the subsidy. So irrigation and fertilization went bye-bye. And they've had fields that, they've had entire fields not come in. So the amount of, of tobacco being grown in, in Cuba right now is Less. really suppressed, even, even though, though the like, demand is huge. Okay. The demand is huge. So quick question, uh -huh. is that because, because once we were able to, what year were we able to import Cuban cigars again? When that long? About three years ago. About three years ago. Where you could bring them back without getting molested at the- Are at you the, able to import them? I can't sell them. You can, oh, I did not know that. I can't sell them, and I can't, and it's illegal to buy them on the internet. Um, in the case of, now, if you go to a foreign country, you can now bring back as much as you want. Okay. You can go to Cuba, and even though the rules say that you can bring back as much as you want, they may only let you bring two boxes back, and they'll keep the rest. Uh, Cuba is still a communist country. I spent a week there this year, and... Uh, communism's no tree. I don't, I wouldn't, uh, that whole socialism thing, I don't think it's going to work. It's a pain in the ass. But uh, the, the, the fact is, is Cuban, Cuban cigars in general are very desired. It's probably like I keep hearing everybody talk about Pappy. Right. Everybody wants Pappy because they can't get Pappy. Exactly. Everybody wants a Cuban because they can't get it. When they actually get it, eh, It's good. It's but good. It's worth the hype. It's not worth the hype. And, and I have Cuban cigars here. And when I get guys that are just going, nope, Cuba, I'll sell them an Atabe or a Byron, one of our better cigars, and I'll give them a Cuban, smoke them both at the same time. Mm -hmm. No one has ever chosen a Cuban, ever. So you do something that's super interesting here. Uh -huh. um, so one of the problems that we have in the whiskey world, and you've pointed it out, is that there's economics of scale. So if you've been in the whiskey business since just post-prohibition, you've got all the kinks worked out and you're able to sell your product for a very affordable price. Mm -hmm. A lot of the new producers acquiring property now, the up, upfront costs of startup, their product comes out at a very high price and it might be a good product, but compared to other products that are as good, right. it's, it's pretty expensive. Right. And so price is not a very good indicator of quality. And, and it's, it's not in cigars. Okay. Same way. Okay. Exact same way. And it's, it's, it's directly, I can, as I get close to the manufacturers, the pricing of cigars is de directly correlates with their overhead. If they're running full page ads and the magazines on the airplane, 
if they've got 50 salespeople running around the streets, I can tell you that their $7 a cigar is going to be $12. Gotcha. Because it tastes like a really good $7 a cigar. Right. It's just $12. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what you're, you're experiencing as well. I think uh, in the case of cigars, we found some absolute hidden gems. We buy a lot of, we buy a lot of product that uh, is very popular in other regions of the world. Uh, Germany, uh, the UK, other parts of the world that it's their best selling cigar. Mm -hmm. We'll bring them in here. We may be one of 20 dealers in the United States. With them. That product we do really well with because it's all low overhead, right. but outstanding quality. Outstanding. And you can, it, it'd probably be the equivalent of if a Pappy is $150 a bottle, it'd be like getting something that's that good for $60. Right, and then there's that much of a difference in the in the cost, and it's getting to know the cigars, getting to know the manufacturers. We want to meet the guys that actually blend this stuff. That are the manufacturers. Are they passionate? Are they as passionate as we are? Mm -hmm. And if if it's a guy that's just talking about his business is up twelve percent, and he's doing a lot of business online, that's probably not going to be the line that works for us. We we want a guy that says, look, I only need five dealers in the United States, and I'm going to sell everything that I. Right. That's, that's the guy that, those are the guys that we do really well with. Gotcha. Yeah. So, um, but, but yeah, go, but go you ahead. you as the buyer, you're, you're a smoker too, right? Absolutely. Because <clears throat> I used to run into this problem in the wine world. There were these wine shops that would pop up and you could, you couldn't find anything about the brands that they were carrying and they were really limited production and that was their business model. But the wines were always pretty expensive. And when you got them and you compared them to the other things, it wasn't that good. It made me wonder, does this wine shop owner not drink? Like, how do they, <laughs> or, or are they just trying to make money? You know, it, you uh, know, but they have big stores to fill. And, you know, and that's what happens with a lot of these bigger stores that have huge humidors. They just have to fill space. This, as I mentioned, this son is me and my three sons. We're all super into cigars. We actually make every manufacturer that wants to sell us, and, and we're, we're, we've been blessed. We've done a, a lot of business, so every manufacturer wants to sell us. But we make them give us five samples, or a minimum of four samples. A lot of times we'll let customers get involved. But me and my son smoke every cigar that they want us to put in. And if the four of us, if it's not unanimous, we don't put it in. Gotcha. So we feel that you it's... Line? Do you, or do you... No, we are looking. I mean... Us? No, we, we, know the, we know the cigar, but we're looking at how does the cigar perform? How does it draw? What's the flavor? Um, we already have a lot of medium profile cigars. Maybe we don't, maybe this doesn't fit, but we test every cigar. And if it's on our floor, it's because four people, uh, plus some of our customers, like tried it and liked it. Because there's, in the same price point, there's a lot of bad stuff out there. And we wade through all that stuff. And we intentionally made our humidor smaller so that all it was full of was good stuff. Right. So I would equate that if I, if I was buying whiskey, I'd love to walk into a whiskey shop that's got 50 bottles. And the guy goes, I've tried every one. And these are the ones that are good. Right. And I, here's why I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. That would be the guy I want to buy from. Right. Because Total Wine has 53,000 square foot to fill up or whatever their average store is massive stores, they got to carry everything. And, and not everything is good. So I, I think in, in cigars, it's probably the same way in whiskey. It's a treasure hunt. It is. Uh, there is a, a huge advantage for someone, and no offense to any of my you know, retail friends out there or anybody who's a producer, but you can buy directly from the manufacturer, right? Yeah. So they don't have the three-tier system that we face in the liquor war world. And the sad reality is, is that if you want to get a bottle of Pappy in your retail location, you have to sell a lot of Wheatley vodka, right? Or because the food chain has to be fed and that's the incentive. Um, you know, those are called inducements. They're technically illegal if it were a quid pro quo straight up, which it's not. But if you are a wholesaler and you are only getting so many Pappy bottles and you have demand in your retail locations, you're probably going to service your best customers, you're the gonna, people that you're making the most money from. Right. Whereas, you know, 
if I owned a retail location that sold whiskey, it would be great for me to be able to go to every distillery, taste their product, and decide which ones I wanted to carry and buy directly from them. And when people walked in, I could make that statement. I tasted, right. I picked these. These right. are the good ones. Right. If you have a well, you might not have access to it because of the other days. Because of the three tier system. Yeah. Um, and so one of the things that you guys do that I think is awesome is you do blind tastings. Right. So that you can teach people that you can find great product without necessarily chasing after the big brand names. Right. Can you show so, that back? Sure. So this is uh, called Blind Man's Draw. And what we do every month, we take, we create six cigars. So this is the November pack. <coughs> Excuse me. Each one has the label taken off and each one has a number. Can you see the number? There's number three. Hey, just so you know, when I walked in, he and his son were in the lobby tearing labels off the cigars. Yes. And no shit, I thought that they were illegal cigars that they were trying to get. <laughs> I, was, I was like, hey, I don't, I, I, I don't know what the fuck going yeah. on. fine. <laughs> well, we did steal them from another. No, uh, I did. I yeah, didn't. We didn't yeah. steal that many of them. But um, this is great for somebody who's just getting into cigars. It's also great for guys <clears throat> that get stuck in a rut. And I'm sure it's the same way with whiskey. There's three or four and that's it. And that's what I'm drinking. And they don't wander out, even though there's other stuff in the same lane that they may want to give a try to. Right. So what we've done is we've hand selected six cigars. It's a minimum of 60 to $70 worth of cigars. The pack is $50. And um, it is six cigars that are gonna be in the same lane, but different manufacturers, different regions. And then what we did is we worked with uh, Cigar Journal Magazine, and Cigar Journal does a reviewing system. We replicated their system. So once you buy it, we take your email address, we send you a link, it takes you to a website that is a reviewing site. Very simple, what's your name? Which cigar are you testing? I'm testing number two. How does it look? How does it burn? How is the flavor? And it will basically kind of give you a series of one to five. And ultimately, will allow you to rank the six cigars in the order that you like them. Then when you're done, you come back in and we tell you what they are. Okay. But what's key is the first time we do it, we're going to take one cigar out of the box. We're going to go get one. We're going to peel the label off. And we're going to smoke it with you. So we can teach you how to review a cigar. So in this case, this is cigar number four. We would smoke number four together. I know what they are. And we would smoke it so that a lot of times with, when you're trying to develop your palate, you taste something that's familiar, but you haven't connected the dots. I always say if my mom gave me oranges all the whole time I was growing up, but never told me it was an orange. Right. Until somebody said it was an orange, I would go, oh, that's what that taste is. That's what that flavor is. So we go through and we do this, this uh, blind man's draw. What's interesting is we were doing them on an a la carte basis. We did about 20. And in every case, the cigar that they picked, number one and number two, in the, out of the six that they tried, they didn't even know we sold them. So they had a preconceived notion of a brand, right? Well, we take the labels off, <clears throat> so you're not blinded by the brand. You may have a preconceived notion about some of these cigars or some of the whiskeys that you drink. But if you drank something without, a, without the labels on it, it was a blind taste, it might open your eyes. Right. I, I have a bottle of Chevis out there. Mm -hmm. Guys won't touch it. I take that and pour it into a, just a scotch decanter. bottle, it's a gone. decanter. <laughs> it, it, I pour it into the decanter and they drink it and they're like, man, this is really good. What is it? I don't know. I think it's Chevis. Oh, no, it can't be Chevis. Yeah. They're, the preconceived notion. So we take the labels off. This is great for somebody that's just getting started in cigars. It's also great for somebody that's been smoking cigars for a long time and it, and it opens their eyes to other stuff. Sure. So uh, this is a, is a program. We're the only ones that do it. Um, and it, is, it comes with a, a pack that has a humidifying pack inside of it. So this little pack right here, when that's inside, we'll keep the whole bag at 72 degree or 72% humidity, which is perfect for cigars. So this will keep for months mm -hmm. and you just smoke your cigars a lot of guys look at this like they jump on it like 
faster than homework that their kids are supposed to be doing. Sure. They get into it, and next thing you know, they're in four days later going, I smoked them all, mm -hmm. and here's where we're at. Yeah. So it, it's really a, uh, it's a, it's a fun experience. It's, it's 50 bucks, and, and off you go. Can you rate my ash? I feel like, I feel like I'm doing a good job. You're doing a great job. Yeah, yeah. And you stayed, you stayed smoking it, and it's, that's perfect. Yeah. Now, I got to talking, and mine started to run on me a little bit. So what I did, I had a little bit where it was burning uneven. So what I did is I just come along here with the lighter. Touch it up. And just touch it up. And then that, now when I smoke it, it will catch up. Be, will be perfect. But you've, you've drawn on it the right amount of times. So everything is staying strong and stable on that, on the ash. Yeah. So I, I, one of my really good friends, he tried to teach me to smoke cigars. And I smoked for the first time. I was having a blast. At the time, we were on a wine trip. And I'm like, man, this is very similar to trying to break down the different flavors of wine. And I'm feeling relaxed and good. Got a little bit of a buzz going. Right. And then... But I was in a room, a smoking room with all, and I'm breathing in all the same Everything, smoke. Yeah. And all of a sudden, man, boom, it hit me. It was too much. It's a hilarious experience because he said, you know what, you need to go get some fresh air. So I go out front, shop owner gives me some ice water, I'm sipping it, and I'm feeling green, man. I'm, I'm doubled over on the, I've got my head on my yep, forearm. You got blasted with that nicotine. But I'm in, I'm in California and it's beautiful outside. And this girl, who's attractive and she's wearing a short kind of sundress comes bebopping across the street. It looks like she's walking towards me, but I'm like, you know, only yeah. lifting my head up over so often. And she, she walks up to me and she goes, and, and I lift my head up. She goes, hi. And I go, hi. And she <laughs> goes, it's my birthday. <laughs> and I'm like, now mind you, I've never been, I had buzzed on nicotine before. So I'm like, am I, hallucinating what the fuck is going on this yeah. weird, you know yeah. and uh and 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 i said well happy birthday she goes thank you and then she just goes walking down and so i put my head back down and i'm thinking that was so strange and i lift my head up and i look back behind me and her sundress is tucked into her thong and half of her ass is just hanging out while she walks down the street and my buddy had come out at that point and i looked at him and i said did that just happen <laughs> And See, he's like, it's the power of the cigar. He's like, it's the power of the cigar, I guess. I don't know. He's probably going, what are you talking about, that Labrador walking down yeah, the street? Yeah, I, I, no, yeah. I see a girl with a thong in her. So he told me, like, it's kind of cool to let your ash get up there a while. You know, you don't want to just knock it off every time. If it, if it falls off, like I said, it's a, it, they used it to clean. It, it won't do anything. You just, we have, we have brooms all over here. So yeah. we, just, we tell people just let it fall off when it wants to. But at this point, is it treating you okay? It's not messing with you at all? No, 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 I don't feel uh, nauseous. I do feel like a little bit relaxed. Relaxed. So the other day, we came here for a whiskey club meeting, and um, I was not smoking, but everybody mm -hmm. else was, so I'm breathing in the second smoke, and I was drinking, and all of a sudden, man, it hit me. I was feeling good. I was feeling relaxed. Everything was great. And uh, I went home, and I, uh, you know, Finished my night up, all that stuff. Uh, took my um, uh, my little sleep aid thing, went to bed, and then I woke up in the middle of the night, could not go back to sleep. Really? Yeah. And so <sighs> I, I woke up the next morning, I went and Googled it, and it, it did say that if you're not used to nicotine, it can't affect your sleep. Is it, that a thing? The, it is a thing. Uh, the, I have two cigars here that I cannot smoke after 5 o'clock because – I, I won't fall asleep. It's the same thing. I have the same thing with, I, I, I love iced tea, but I can't drink iced tea after seven o'clock or I'll never go to sleep. Oh, so it, you're fine. It doesn't matter. You just take that, throw it in there, sweep that off the floor. I kind of want to taste it. You said that taste was cool, it. right? You actually get the notes. It's way sweeter than I expected. I mean, there's a little bit of acidity, but it's not. Uh, and it almost has almost a little saltiness. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, a coffee uh, note on the ash that I didn't taste as much on the cigar. I mean, I get a little bit of coffee, but I'm real sensitive to. I've got the bitterness gene. So, yeah. Like I don't drink coffee at all because it just tastes too bitter. Yeah. 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 
So that is awesome. So uh, part of the reason why we have gotten together is because industrial has a number of the whiskey club admins that love to come up here. Right, yeah, there was uh, six that came up last night. Yeah, and, um, and so we started talking and we think that we might try to do some sort of a, a collaboration. collaboration. Yeah. I, I have to be careful saying the word partnership. I think that's a legal term, a collaboration. Yeah. And um, so tell us what you had in mind for that. Well, one of the things that we had talked about was um, you guys are working on something special. Um, as far, and I, I don't know how much you can divulge here, but so you guys we, will... we, we, we are working on a single barrel selection um, that, and we're not sure what it is. We, it, it's probably going to be a Kentucky bourbon. Um, we're working on that. We're working the details out on that. This can be a little bit complicated because we do have to go through the three tier system. And for us to do a collaboration, we have to release if we're going to release bottles <clears throat> with cigars, it has to be sold through a retail location that also has a tobacco, tobacco license. license, which most of them do. Now. Right. Um, and uh, Loyalty Liquor, uh, mm -hmm. Aaron Arterburn, does in fact have a, um, a, a tobacco license. And so we talked about using your expertise mm -hmm. to come up with a package of cigars that would be kind of put together in a package right 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 but i think the the key to that is we have some whiskey drinkers that also have very very good smoking palates right so uh, what they're going to do is join you guys as you start to go through this this process to pick this barrel and then pair the right cigars with that and then we'll include like a three pack or six pack of cigars uh, ideally, I, I'm hoping the house stick is one of those because I think there's so much sweetness that comes out of this cigar, natural sweetness that it can do nothing but help uh, uh, any like, whiskey bourbon. That yeah, you're yeah, gonna it's gonna, they're going to pair well. They're going to pair well. So we, we're not just going to throw some cigars in there. We're actually going to take some cigars that have been paired with the barrel that you guys select so that we can make sure that they're getting that the, the people that are lucky enough to get the bottle and the cigar package. Um, will be able to in, really enjoy both. You really want, and from a pairing perspective in general, pair light to light, dark to dark. Gotcha. So just as a, as a general statement, even if you like a more full-bodied cigar, a darker cigar, if you're going to drink a, a bourbon or a scotch, that, or a bourbon or a whiskey that's a little lighter, particularly applicable for scotch, where it's naturally just a little bit lighter, then smoke a lighter wrapper cigar so they'll accentuate each other they'll work against each other if you go dark to light. So um, we'll put a nice assortment in there that'll balance perfectly with, with the barrel that you guys pick. And we'll, we'll give that a shot. And then it, as this matures, then I can get our master blenders involved and maybe we create our own cigar just for your group. Right, right. And that's a very exciting opportunity because from, for, from what I understand, unless the, the cigar shop has relationships directly with the manufacturer, most of the time when you do a custom cigar, you're talking about 5,000 cigars 5, or something, yeah. right? And so uh, you have the ability to do smaller runs. Right. And um, so kind of the idea would be, because we talked about there's going to be a variance between the number of bottles we have sure. and the number of sticks that you purchase. And so we may have more than one stick in the pack. I believe that. Sure. I think, yeah, two or three sticks. Two yeah. or three sticks in the pack. But you would have additional cigars here in the shop that if the people got the pack and really liked it um they by yeah. by default the number we have to order you're going to have more here and they can sure and, get more. And, and what we'll do is we have a hidden e-commerce page just for our members um we would put a page in just for you guys that would enable you to actually come in and buy those cigars and and we're not going to make them available to the rest of the, of the population out there. so that's awesome. it'll be a very you know, with I'm sure within whiskey and bourbon, it's the same as it is with cigars. These guys will start chasing this stuff that nobody can get. Right. And when when a cigar comes out that's really good, and it's extremely limited, most cigar companies will will make a hundred thousand cigars a month. They'll ship and sell a hundred thousand cigars a month. We're talking about cigars that they're going to make six or seven hundred and exhaust all of this very unique tobacco. Right. And then at that point, the next one will be different. 
because that, that tobacco has been exhausted. But um, it's also going to be tobacco that's been sitting for six years, seven, eight years. Right. It'll be really, really high quality. So we're very excited about that. And good news for all of you, he doesn't drink. And I don't know shit about cigars, so it won't be us that's picking. <laughs> no, no, that I guarantee you. Yeah, yeah, it won't be us that's picking. But uh, very experienced palates that uh, are both uh, experienced at smoking cigars and whiskey. And we've talked about doing some uh, awesome little co-branded, you know, yep. maybe some packaging and things like that. Absolutely. And so it's going to be very exciting. It's going to be extremely limited. And by the time we pull all this stuff together, the club is going to be roughly... 10 times the size of what's uh, available. Of what's available. <laughs> so uh, when it does come out, you're going to want to hop on it if you're into that sort of thing. But if people want to get more information about uh, industrial cigars and, uh, you know, get involved with you, where do they go? Well, you can go to industrialcigars.com. Um, you can watch us on Facebook and Instagram every Saturday morning at 10 o'clock ish, 10 or six ish. We say we do a show called Saturday at the shop. Uh, that my son and I do, and uh, we talk about upcoming events. We're very event-driven here. We do uh, car shows every second Saturday of the month. Um, one of my sons is a professional golfer, so our members actually can go out every Saturday morning and get golf lessons with him. Um, we have, uh, we're doing an ugly sweater uh, party. We just did a Halloween party that was over the top. And we had 100, almost 120 people here, adults all in costume. Wow. And it was, uh, it, it's, a, it's a blast. So we're not like your normal shop. We have a great culture here. We have a bourbon society. We have a scotch society. We have the uh, tequila society now that are just a group of guys that are, that would be like you that are, they're just really into both. Right. And uh, they'll, they'll bring in five or six bottles. Uh, Rodney's been coming in for the last couple because everybody is starving for information. Uh, the conversation that we've had today, I've had this a thousand times on our floor. We're all about education. We don't, we don't want you just to grab something that you know, because there, maybe there's something there that's better. Right. And we want to we wanna help, help you just expand into the hobby. So if you want more information about Bourbon Real Talk, you can find us at bourbonrealtalk.com. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter, forward slash Bourbon Real Talk, and you can search for us on YouTube. And do you have anything else you want to add before we wrap it up? No, I just thank you for having me. It's this has been great. I love to talk about this stuff. Like you said, we could talk about it for uh, hours and for hours, hours and hours. hours. Yeah. So if you woke up this morning and you were unsure whether or not anyone loved you, just know that I love you. And I'll see you next time on Bourbon Real Talk. <laughs>